Once again, it's time for Survival of the Fittest is the Soup Du Jour. I'm Chef Roberto Trevino, and today I'm going to talk about something that I find very, very interesting, only because I've, uh, I've, okay, let's just try straight up. Linda's La Cantina Steakhouse. Now, if you know of Orlando's history, you'll know that's the one of the oldest restaurants in Orlando. Well, I've been driving past this place on Colonial for some time, and I've always looked at it, and usually I'm off Mondays, and they were always closed on Mondays, you know, like classic restaurant. And I always said to myself, man, I'm never going to get a chance to go to this place. You know, Linda's La Cantina Steakhouse. I mean, yes, of course I want to go there. So I finally got a chance to go there. And I walk in, <clears throat> and I decide to eat in the, the fire, uh, what do they call it, the fire water lounge, <laughs> something along those lines, and sit at the bar. Of course, you know, I'm there with my producer, Rick from, uh, from uh, Havoc Media. Thanks to them always for helping me produce this podcast for everybody. But we've decided we're going to go to Linda's La Cantina Steakhouse finally, and we sit at the bar, and let me just tell you, I didn't expect to eat so much. You know, you're used to kind of going like, okay, this is a classic place. You know, they throw in a salad with your steak, and uh, you get one side, and I said, oh, bring me a French onion soup, and it was big, bread, and it was a lot. And I ordered a T-bone steak. Did I ever think I was going to get the steak that I got? It was absolutely huge. I was like, wait a minute, what? And at a great price, unbelievable. I mean, this is what, you know, the restaurant business has, has changed a lot over the years, and this place has not. And that's what makes it awesome, okay? It's like you step back into, I mean, the original La... Uh, Linda's La Cantina Steakhouse opened in 1947, so and it was across the street from its current location. And apparently, it moved. They moved it into a bigger location across the street, and it burned down. And then they rebuilt it. And yeah, it's one of those places. But the food is worth it. And you know, you start to drink, and you start to you know hear the story and talk shop with the bartenders. And it's a funky bar because it's one of those bars where. The bartenders are actually standing and they're at the same level while you're sitting. So it's like literally like table, table height. And the bartenders are sunken, you know, like sunken bar. And, uh, and it's got this like, like this fountain that's on fire behind you. And it's just classic. I mean, I mean, I got to say, I loved every second of it. I mean, there's other places like, um, like Phil's Steakhouse on the Strip in Las Vegas. You know, spaghetti steak. You know, you get your red wine or white, you want red or white, and, and it's just, you go with it. And it's one of those places, like um, Original Joe's in, 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 in the Silicon Valley, and um, the Tattish Room in San Francisco, and, you know, um, let's think of one of the old classics in Puerto Rico in San Juan, La Bombonera in San Juan, you know, or La Mallorquina that's been there since 1846, imagine that. So, you know, uh, it's just a classic restaurant. So I enjoyed it thoroughly. And definitely, if you're ever in Orlando, you must make it there. It's, a, it's worth it. Close on Mondays. Remember that. So having said that, I, I think, you know, I didn't order a big red wine. I didn't even look at the wine list because I just wasn't in the mood. You know, I was just in the mood for beer. And obviously, or thanks to Orlando Brewing, who's always in the house with us. But I had some beers with my steak and... Uh, and it was delicious. What can I say? You know, and the girl was telling me that in the kitchen, the same guy's been cutting and grilling the steaks for 40 years. And you hear that and you say to yourself, is that, that is unbelievable. Um, that's exactly what you, what you want in something like this. And, and that kind of energy, you know, the broccoli, the works, the salad. You want your Thousand Island, you want your blue cheese, or you want the, you know, you're just like, Wow. I loved it. So uh, definitely survived the COVID Linda's La Cantina Steakhouse. And uh, that's good to see. 
And I was asking, I mean, how many covers you do, you know? And they were telling me, oh, we do. We're busy. We turned the room a few times. And this room can easily sit, I have to say, anywhere between 150 to 200 people. So they're probably doing 350 to 400 covers a night, you know? It's just killing it. The place is awesome. And it was a, you know, it was a kind of a mellow Tuesday, and they were packed. So that just goes to show you what a Friday or a Saturday must be like. Bam. So... Definitely worth the visit. If you live here in Orlando, then it's a must. And some people will tell you, because I heard there was a couple of girls at the end, on the bar, and they were talking about how they'd been going there with their mom for years, and they would share the T-bone, and on and on. and uh, Restaurant memories. Some, some of our lives, you know, some, some, some port, you know, there's certain parts of our lives that are always associated with certain restaurants like i can tell you like just after high school my friends and i we would go play video games of course you liked video games you know we we were playing double dragon and we'd always go to this pizza place and i want to call it skip's pizza yeah i think it was called skip's pizza and we would get pizza there like maybe three or four times a week and play video games and just that part of my life, and I associate it with Skip's Pizza. And so I can imagine uh, someone who's lived in Orlando their whole life has, you know, those memories of Linda's uh, La Cantina Steakhouse. So it's definitely that place. Uh, we used to go to a place when I was growing up. It was called the Longhorn. <laughs> you can imagine, Longhorn. Everybody, we're going to the Longhorn. <laughs> it, was a, it was always the best, you know, so... Longhorn, um, El Farito was another favorite in my youth, youth. If, if you want to, like, talk about, like, when I was really young and you can say, like, what was your favorite restaurant when you were really a kid? And I'd say, oh, El Farito. <laughs> they make the best uh, flautas. So, uh, definitely, those are food memories. So, Linda's La Cantina Steakhouse, a must for everybody. Um, you know, I... Again, and, and getting into conversation with the bartenders, you start to hear. I mean, the bartender was an older gentleman, very cool cat, really. Very, very smooth. You know, did his job very well. <laughs> Could talk shop with just about anybody. I heard him. He had like four different conversations going on at the bar at the same time. So that just goes to show you he's definitely a pro. But, uh, you know, he, he was talking about all the different bars that he worked in. He was remembering the old Bob Snow days on Church Street, you know, <laughs> Just knew this town, you know, knows this city, knows the restaurants, talked about them well, and just been around the block. So that's always nice to see. All right, I need a sip. I need a sip of this great beer. Oh, yeah, that's delish. <laughs> that's delicious. I got to admit. Orlando Brewery, always in the house, always nice and cold. Remember you to, to follow us on all these different uh, podcast um, platforms. Uh, go to our Patreon, our YouTube channel. You know, I think it's important for us to have that link to you. Because in the end, it's all about what can we bring to you? What can I share with you as far as, you know, culinary thoughts? What can I share with you as far as business thoughts about restaurants that i enjoy going to you know and definitely linda's la cantina steakhouse is one of them and um and i'm not a big meat eater everyone who knows me knows i'm not a huge like steak and potato guy because i'm not but when i do decide to, to have something like that i really don't want to just go to your cookie cutter steakhouse you know just not into it and uh this is definitely worth you know that steak venture <laughs> that I rarely do. Like I said, not a big meat guy. But when I do get a steak and I go with a T-bone or a porterhouse or a New York strip, rarely a filet, usually go with something greasy. I love churrasco. Churrasco is kind of an interesting cut. Certainly has become the, the choice cut of Latin America. So, um, you know, the skirt, state, the outside skirt. But it's uh, definitely... A good steak to eat so um you know that's one of those things that i've always said like sometimes the secondary cuts or the cheaper cuts are the tastier ones it's like if you ask me okay let's talk about chicken for a minute you want breast or thigh i'll say well i want breast because it just 
seems to be the thing to do. But if you ask me which one tastes better, I'm going to tell you it's the thigh. So uh, a secondary cuts of steaks sometimes to me taste better. Like the churrasco is one of those steaks. Um, the colette or the, what do they call it? The piquinha. Another like super duper cut. Not a common cut in North America, but certainly in Central and South America and um, in Mexico, I would have to say it's a, it's a cut that people enjoy a lot more. And it's a great cut of meat. You know, once again, a secondary cut. Not necessarily, you know, like your prime filet barrel minimum $65 a pound. Forget about it. It's gotten un- impossible to get a good filet at a decent price. I mean, I was talking to a purveyor the other day. He literally told me top of the line filet is about 65 bucks a pound right now. I mean, what? What are you going to charge for that? I mean, what are you going to really charge for that? Honestly, let's think about that for a minute. It's just rounded off at 60 bucks. You'd have to sell. <sighs> yeah, you'd have to sell it for about 160 bucks to just kind of barely make some money on a steak like that. Well, not barely, but yeah, <laughs> because running a restaurant's not cheap. So barely making any money on a steak like that. So no wonder the churrascos become like the choice cut for restaurants. No wonder the Colette or the piquinha has become another choice cut and if it's not it should be and will be because as we move forward as we've seen the supply chain kind of dwindle somewhat after these these wild ride we've had of you know pandemics and lack of employees and i think meat's gonna get even more expensive and harder to get so we'll see new things coming of that will people be looking for stranger things to eat and i'm not suggesting crickets or chicken's feet or or anything funky like that but are they going to be looking for that churrasco are they going to be looking for the flap steak or the you know the flat iron steak or the hanger steak you know again secondary cuts people love their meat you're not going to get them away from that that's for sure chicken pork beef it's just there you know shrimp has gone through the roof it's a really wild time you know restaurants are definitely having a hard time keeping money <laughs> flowing you know and people still want a lot of value from what they they come into a restaurant and they say well you know i want a lot of money a lot of food for my money so you gotta have to f- play the game you know and uh, and hope that uh, things stabilize somewhat because if not restaurants really have to search out new angles like you know it's amazing we actually are bringing in uh, impossible meat, you know, to make meatballs with or to make a hamburger with, you know, impossible, you know, the the, the fake meat, <laughs> the fake meat, <laughs> the fake meat. So people are going to enjoy fake meat. And I think maybe in the near future, fake meat may actually become meat meat. Yeah. I know it sounds crazy, but it may be the case as meat becomes probably a little more expensive and more scarce. Would you have ever thought something like this could happen? I'd have to say no, but it may. So be ready for whatever and, you know, try to stay healthy, try to stay innovative, you know, in the kitchen for sure, but definitely try to stay healthy, man. It's a wild time, you know, and I don't really want to get really into it all that, but I got my fingers crossed. America, Puerto Rico, Latin America, Europe, everybody, I'm telling you, try to stay focused and let's not go into these these lockdowns again because that's the last thing we need. So always remember, you know, the ghost kitchen is out there. Search it out. Fake meat possibilities or alternatives to what you're used to cooking every day because it's getting harder and harder to get a good steak. But if you can find one, I can tell you where to get one. It's Linda's La Cantina Steakhouse in Orlando, right on Colonial. It's a must. And this is Chef Roberto Trinho. I'm telling you, I'm sending love to everyone from coast to coast, from the Caribbean to North America, Japan, London. We even got some listeners in Argentina. Ha ha. So next week, we'll talk about Argentina a little bit. All right, y'all. Everybody, I love you. This is Survival of the Fittest. This is the Soup du Jour. I'm Roberto Trevino. 
We'll see you, Stones. Stay healthy, everybody. We'll see you soon. Later.